we now come to the heart of linear algebra. Linear algebra essentially is concerned with solving the system x equal to b. The system x equal to b is a system of n linear equations, linear functions on the left side and each of them are equal to some number on the right side. So find a common x which will solve all of these. That's the meaning of solving the system x equal to b. Now this kind of structure is inherent in economics in inherent in many many places that you this is a very very important system of equations now you can ask why not nonlinear equation of course there's a system of nonlinear equations and there's a very famous way the newton's method to solve it but here we are considering ourselves focused only on ax equal to b because this is a system that re repeatedly occurs a very important system and uh, has a lot of uh, important implication and it also brings out the beauty that how a very simple idea idea which is called elimination or Gaussian elimination is the key to a lot in linear algebra it is a key to a subject like linear programming which has huge implications and huge applications in the real modern world so here we are going to have a matrix A of size m into n and we are given a b in rm a vector and we ask the question that what is the vector x in rn such that when a is multiplied with x the resulting vector is a b vector now this is from the point of view of a functional perspective looking at a the matrix a as a linear map from rn to rm is basically asking the reverse question kind of inverse operation in the sense that if you look at a so given an x you have an output ax which we expect we b if the b is given our problem is that b the unknown output is given is out no no output is known and it is given to us we have to find that x in rn which when operated on by a gives us b that b is equal to ax so you ask the inverse question here it's it's not that you don't give an x you don't compute an ax you give the here the game is completely different but you will see everything is finally based on that fundamental simple fact of you know kind of linear combination of vectors that is the key to everything in linear algebra and that's what i want to bring to your notice here that the simple idea with that simple idea you can build up such a beautiful edifice and that's that's very uh, you know kind of hum humbling and very very interesting that makes the subject very lively so when you have a m cross n matrix there can be three possibilities m equal to n m strictly bigger than n and m strictly less than n so we will discuss all these possibilities one by one so if the first possibility which is the most uh, easy to handle possibly or most easy to comprehend is the case where m is equal to n that is we consider a matrix a which is of size n cross n or a square matrix so basically we now look at a as an operator from rn to rn and n cross n matrix and suppose if it is bijective there is an inverse map of a and a being a linear map a inverse is also a linear map the question would be how do you compute a inverse how do you look at a inverse itself that's that's a very very important question because uh, computing of a inverse is a very important thing and i okay i know that a inverse is a linear map but and hence it would be a matrix what is that matrix representation when i know a so that's that's the idea so x would be now given by the inverse mapping operator on b so basically here also we are doing matrix multiplication and the same thing which is nothing but linear combination but we need to construct that matrix representing the inverse of the mapping a so a inverse so that's very important now you take any b in rm then if x is bijective ax equal to b has a unique solution x element of rm unique so why 
because now A is both surjective and injective and because A is injective, the kernel of A is equal to 0. By the rank nullity theorem, because we can show now that the dimension of Rn is equal to dimension of the image of A plus the nullity of A. The nullity of A is 0 here. So, n is equal to dimension of the image of A which is same as the dimension of column space of A or briefly put A has all its column vector linearly independent which means in this case A has which is that is A, the so A is a full rank matrix so which means all the rows the n rows are also linearly independent. So here we have concluded that Ax equal to B has a unique solution if and only if rank A is equal to N because dimension of the columns of A is called the rank of the matrix or dimension of the image space of A is called the rank of the matrix. So here we are making a very bold statement which may not be bold you might say that it, you, we just can't observe it carefully but we have not proved it that A x equal to B has a unique solution if and only if the rank of A is equal to N. So that comes out of essentially applying the rank nullity theorem. So here you see the use of the rank nullity theorem that we have studied in the last lecture because here the rank nullity theorem's power has come out and shows a very important thing that whenever rank A is equal to N, AX equal to B is uh, solvable, has a unique solution which means that whenever rank A equal to N, the A inverse would always exist. That's, that's what you have to know. So, now let us see, of course the key step would be to compute a matrix, uh, compute the inverse of a matrix. So, we will move towards that. But, let us see what is the simplest situation in which we can solve the equation of the form Ax equal to b. Now, let us consider a system like the type Ax equal to b. Now, in place of the matrix A, I replace it by a matrix U, capital U, which is an upper triangular matrix. Means all the non-zero elements must be above the diagonal. Below the diagonal, everything would be zero. So, let us take the simplest example, 2 by 2 matrix. So, here the matrix which we call 1, 0, 1, 2 rank of this matrix is obviously 2 so it must have a unique solution right so because 1 0 and 1 2 are linearly independent so we are asking what are the values of x1 x2 which when multiplied by the matrix a given by 1 1 0 2 must be 3 and 4 the vector consisting of components 3 component 4 x component 3 x 1 component 3 x2 component 4 so, if we expand this, we can write it like this. So, from here, what you will get from equation 2, x2 is 2. And from equation 1, putting x2 is 2, you get x1 is 1. And hence, we get a unique solution. As we have seen, the elements of the upper triangular matrix, the elements on the diagonal are called pivots of A. And here we again conclude if all the pivots are non-zero, the solution is unique. As we will soon show that if one of the pivots is zero, then the linear independence of uh, the column vectors will break and the rank would not be full rank and hence we will run into trouble. So now let us see how can we get into trouble. Now in the same matrix U, let us put A11 or U11 if you want to say to be 0. So replace this 1 that you see here with 0. And then these two equations will now become 0 of x1 plus 1 of x2 equal to 3 and 0 of x1 plus 2 of x2 equal to 3 because now what what will i have now i have the situation wait that from equation 3 i get x2 equal to 3 and equation 4 i have 2x2 equal to 4 but if i put x2 equal to 3 here 
it will give me 3 into 2 6 which is not equal to 4. So which means that if I get the value of x2 from the equation 3 it does not solve equation 4. So which means this system does not have a solution you cannot solve it there is a contradiction. Now we will do something what we did in school a very very simple thing right. So let us consider a given square matrix and our idea would be to now can we do some operations on it to reduce it to upper triangular matrix because in upper triangular matrix what is happening is very it's very simple what we are doing is a process of back substitution so if there are two variables first we find x2 and then we go to x1 if there are three variables i find x3 go to x2 then go to x1 so it's called a back substitution method so i have not written it here absolutely certainly that this method is called black sub, back substitution but it is what it is called the back substitution method now let us consider this you can understand this is the line x, x uh, line x1 plus x2 equal to 1 and 2x1 plus half x2 equal to 1 so the first line in intersects the x and y axis at 1 0 and 0 1 and the second line at half 0 and 0 2 and so they cut in somewhere in the first orthon. So now let us see how do we proceed. You know how do we did at school. So let us write down the row 1 as x means the equation this, this particular row as the equation x1 plus x2 minus 1 equal to 0 and the row 2 as 2x1 plus half x2 minus 1 equal to 0. Now let us carry out the row operation minus 2 of r1 okay so let us carry out the operation minus 2 of r1 plus r2 so and replace this with this row replace the way r2 replace the row with the new row which is minus 2 into r1 plus r2 you might ask is this valid if we do this thing are we maintain some semblance means if we now change the row whatever uh, and change the row by this whatever we get whatever we whatever system we finally get we need also solve who solve which is easier to solve we need will that solution be same as the original one the answer looks to be yes so in this particular case minus 2 r1 plus 2 r2 means this right this is the thing so with this i want to replace the the row 2 so the row 2 which is this whole thing is now replaced with minus 2x2 so when i do this plus half x2 plus 1 so I am replacing row 2 with this so if I add up these two thing it will give me minus 3 by 2 x2 so this will be plus 1 so this I have made a mistake here it is not minus 3 this plus 1 is plus 1 here also it should be minus 1 so we take again the 1 to the other side and 3 by 2 x2 equal to 3 which means x2 is equal to minus 2 and when I put x2 equal to minus 2, I have x1 equal to 3. So, so this will be minus 1. Sorry, sorry, I made a mistake here. Sorry, here this uh, art, the new r2 is this, it will minus 3 by 2 x2 plus 1 equal to 0. So, it will be minus 3 by 2 x2 equal to minus 1. So, which means x2 equal to 2 third is the solution. So x1 equal to one third. So this point of intersection is one third two third. Okay. So it's uh, two third in uh, one third in the x variable, two third in the y variable. Okay. Now is this row operation that we did and got it into a upper triangular matrix type form? Is this row operation valid? Is this meaningful? Means if I change the row, my matrix changes. Now if I solve this equation, is that solution a solution of the original problem? That's the question. 
or if the solution of the original problem is the solution of this. So the row changed problem means row changing means not only matrix coefficients are changing, the B part is also changing as you have seen because I have taken the B part in this side of the equation, the left, taken it to the left side. So of course you can keep it on the right side and do all the stuff also but Suppose I write the first row as e, the equation 1, e1, x1, x2, x1 plus x2 minus 1 equal to 0 and e2, x1, x2 is 2x1 plus half x2 minus 1 equal to 0. Suppose x1 star and x2 star solves these two equations. Then that is e1, x1 star, x2 star equal to 0 and e2, x1 star, x2 star equal to 0. So if x1, x2 star a solution of this system of equation, then x1, x2 star should also solve this system of equation. Because here e1, x1, x2 star is anywhere 0. Now because e1, x1, x2 star is anywhere 0 and e2, x1, x2 star is anywhere 0 and alpha is any element of r, this should also be 0. So x1 star, x2 star also solves this. Now further, if x1 star, x2 star also solves this equation, which is the equation d now, then this system, then it also solves the original problem. Because what would happen? Because e1, x1, x2 star is equal to 0, here I can put this to be 0 to get e2, x1, x2 star equal to 0. That is, any solution of this problem, the transform problem where the rows are being changed by row operation, is a is same as it will also give the solution of the original problem. So if I get an upper triangular matrix, the solution that I get is actually a solution of the original problem. This is a very important thing to keep in mind. So these operations that we are going to do are called elementary row operations. And of course, this above, above problem with what we have got here, you can find the solution completely. One third, two third, I have just told you. Now, for example, you take this system. Now you okay, clearly observe that these two vectors 1, 1 and 2, 2 or one, the columns 1, 2, 1, 2 are not linearly independent, they are linearly dependent. So rank of the matrix is 1, not 2. So what would happen if the rank of the matrix is 1? Would it have 1? No solution, which in one case we saw, what would it have? unique solution or you did have more more than one solution let us look at this now if i do the row operation minus 2 of r1 plus r2 then this is exactly what we get the upper triangular matrix has one of its pivots element that is u22 equal to 0 one of the diagonal element is 0 and b hat that is the operation the same operation minus 2 r1 plus r2 would give b hat to be 2 of 0. Now this would give me two equations 1 of 1 into x1 plus x2 equal to 2, 1 into x1 in plus 1 into x2 equal to 2 because u of x equal to b tilde and then once you have got it and 0 of x1 plus 0 of x2 equal to 0. Now, for the last equation, the second equation, what doesn't matter, whatever be my x1 and x2, this equation is always true. So, now if this is true, what can we do? Well, just by looking at these two equations, it is very difficult to make a claim. In fact, if you go by the terminology in linear algebra, the variable associated with the scenario where a pivot element is 0, in this case the variable associated is x2, then that we call free variable and can assign any value to it. So in this case, if I assign any value t to x2, then x then x1 is 2 minus t. So we can always set x2 equal to t and thus write x1 x2 equal to 2 minus t by t. So there are infinite solutions because I can choose x2 to be any t and that will have to give me the answer. But there are infinite possible solution also for a n cross n matrix. For the next chapter also we will discuss n cross n matrix but, but 
and and then on the third chapter we'll go into the situation where m is not equal to n okay so here you see that for any choice of t this is a solution so there are uncountably infinite solutions so if we have a n cross n matrix a then the system of equations a x equal to b has three possibilities unique solution no solution infinite solutions now here may be a more simpler way or a compact way of doing elementary row operations this process of doing this elementary row operations is often goes under the name called gaussian elimination and here let us show an example through a 3 by 3 matrix these are 3 by 3 matrix like the entries are not i am not specifically putting some numbers but they are just uh, symbolic representation a11 a12 a13 so aij means i am an aij is an element in the ith row and jth column okay so our job is to transfer a to an upper triangular matrix doing those row operations as we will see that in the next lecture that doing this row operations and converting a to an upper triangular matrix is same as multiplying it on the left by some kind of matrices called the elementary matrices and elementary matrices will play a major role in the next chapter okay so now from a book called Capitula, it's a book by, it's a recent book from Siam, sort of Society of Industrial and Applied Mathematics, where uh, this book is about the use of linear algebra in differential equations. So we will take up that topic at the end of our study of linear algebra, and we, then we will decide what, to, which way to proceed, and then we will take it, take the course forward. Then. A is this matrix 1 0 minus 1 in the first row 3 1 0 in the second row 1 minus 1 minus 1 in the fourth so in the third row now a is equal to this and b is 0 1 minus 4 b1 is 0 b2 is 1 b3 is minus 4 so it's a 3 cross 3 matrix and i am seeking a 3 cross 3 vector such that a of x is equal to b. So, in, because we know that uh, when we are doing the operations on the coefficients, so, uh, on the coefficient matrix of the system x equal to b, I am also at the same time doing an operation on b on the other side. So, this can be jointly done by developing what is called the augmented matrix. That is, don't keep any difference between a and b whatever be your entries here in a you can all you can always take the b along with it and do the row operations completely at one go over a and b right sometimes what would happen if you don't take in this augmented matrix sometimes you can do a row elimination and making um maybe making some error in the row of uh, when you one might just forget doing the row operations of b and things can just be wrong so it's very important that when you are doing a row operation on the matrix say you, are, you have to simultaneously do a row operation in b so why not forget the variables x and club a and b together to make a bigger matrix called the augmented matrix so something a vector has been augmented the column vectors have been augmented and then you do a row operation so at the same time you get u and you same time you get b tilde so this is called the row so here this was your a and this was your b and this was the way a augmented vector b has come this is called the augmented matrix so if i want to transform the matrix A part into a triangular matrix, I must be sure to drive all elements below 1, 1, 1 and minus 1, that is 3, 1 and minus 1, that is the position A2, 1, A3, 1 and A2, 3. These positions have to have zero entries. 
If other than non-zero, these two positions, these three positions have to have non-zero entry. So the first thing is that to make this in place of three to give them zero, we do this operation minus three r one replace r two by minus three r one plus r two, and you will get this. So you see, the remaining part of the matrix is changes changed only. This is changed. Okay. So here, as you will see, that this will not change even when we do this row operation. So only four is changed to minus four. Remaining others are separate. Uh, is in the same. So why? Now I have got this zero. Now I have to got this also zero. So what I have to do? I write minus R one because I don't touch R one is not to be touched. Minus R one to get the upper triangular one. Minus R one plus R three. So it's minus R one plus R three. So minus one into R one is minus one and plus one. And that plus R three. मतलब add row one with row three. So you will have मतलब minus R uh, row one with row three minus one plus one zero zero minus one minus one minus one minus one plus one plus one and minus one zero. And here if you do the row operation, I have done. uh so suppose i do this row operation first row operation as i have done what we have done minus 3 r2 plus r2 because of that that i have made this zero In the next row operation i have made this zero right so now minus 1 has to be transformed so i have to use the row 2 and row 1 So, what we did, we just added R two and R three. We just added R two and R three. This is what I get. So here, see, we have already got an upper triangular matrix, and also the side is already transformed. We get this B tilde. So hence, hence, if you look at the expanded system, you can immediately understand how to solve it by back substitution. so here is an example how you can use the augmented matrix so you what you are doing suppose i am doing uh, this is my r2 plus r3 so r2 plus r3 r2 you add replace r3 by r2 plus r3 so 0 plus 0 is 0 1 plus minus 1 is 0 3 plus 0 is 3 3 so here i have R two here this one R two plus R three. So, but here also on this side, this, so you have working on the A part, but also on the B part of the augmented matrix. Here you add R two plus R three. That is one plus minus four. So, which is one minus four, which is minus three, and that is what is written here. So the upper triangular matrix is given in this way. What look, and the associated vector is now becoming zero, one, and minus three instead of the original one, zero, one, and minus four. Now, this solution is unique because none of the pivot elements of A. Is none of the pivot elements of the original A is non-zero one one minus one, and look at the pivot elements of U one one three. So the pivot is so the sorry none of the diagonal elements of A is non-zero, and look at the pivot elements of the final matrix element U, which is one one three. None of the diagonal elements are zero. So you have all non-zero pivots, and non-zero pivots is a signal. That the original matrix has all its column vectors linearly independent, and hence 
num all the number of row vectors are linearly independent and hence you get a unique solution of the system actually when you say ax equal to b and you will have a unique solution well when you have all n is linearly independent what is b b must be an element of the column space so column space if all the columns are linearly independent the dimension of the column space is n so you, you will have x1 into capital a1 x2 into capital a2 plus x3 into capital a n is would be equal to b you can represent b in terms of the basis the, the, those linearly independent column vectors because there will be basis of the column space now this x1 x2 xn that you will get the coefficient that must be unique and you can write x1 a1 x2 a2 dot dot x and a n equal to b so these coefficients that you get by writing b as element expanding the elements of the basis are your required x and there will be by the property of the basis representation they must be unique so that is why if the dimension of the image space or dimension of the column space is n as we have seen previous when the when the matrix a is surjective see everything is connected the surjectivity or injectivity bijectivity is connected to the full rankness of the matrix a mapping property of bijectiveness is transferred to the linear independence property of the columns and that is leading us to show by the basis representation that you will have unique solution and vice versa so thank you hope you have enjoyed this little discussion and we will carry forward the discussion in the next class thank you